I'd like to tell you two stories that will root leadership development and coaching in best practices long established. The first one is about essential and basic leadership skills. The other is about changing top leadership behavior to transform an organization. The year is 1940. The United States is ramping up industrial production to supply the allied forces. There is a shortage of skilled workforce. Later on, this is aggravated with the boys going to fight in Europe and in the Pacific. It is necessary to recruit millions of people who have never worked in a factory. Half of these are women who until then had fulfilled the role of a housewife. A program is developed to quickly support production of war material, build planes, tanks, ships, and thereby train the inexperienced worker and handle the challenges of employing the new employees. A group of experts consisting of specialists within management and education are appointed, and TWI, Training Within Industry, is created and spread with lightning speed due to the multiplier effect of Train the Trainer. Different programs are developed. Two of them are of particular interest for management and leadership development. Job instruction is designed to quickly train employees to do a job correctly, safely and conscientiously. Job relations develop leaders to build positive employee relations, increase cooperation and motivation and effectively resolve conflict. More than 1 million leaders are trained in job instruction and half a million in job relation. The war ends. The programs almost totally disappear in the West. After the war, under the leadership of General MacArthur, an incredible effort is deployed to rebuild Japan's economy. In 1950, a team of TWI trainers is deployed to train companies and academia. Among those who were listening is Toyota Leadership, the most successful automotive manufacturer in the world to sustain growth and productivity. To this day, TWI-inspired methods are still a pillar of the Toyota production system. Based on this success, there is a rediscovery of TWI in the early 2000s, first in the US, and later on in Europe. 80 years after the creation of TWI, are we developing basic skills with our South African leaders or are we leaving it to chance? I train on job instruction and job relation. The second story has to do with leadership behavior and organization's improvement. An insight is that ideal results require ideal behaviors. In short, if leaders develop the right habits, outcomes will look after themselves. Good culture lead to good results. The year is 2009. After six years of study with his team, Mike Rother publishes the Toyota Kata. He is already renowned in the lean management movement. In his book, he answers two questions. What are the unseen managerial routines and thinking that lie behind Toyota's success with continuous improvement and adaptation? In other words, why can they keep going and sustain this where others struggle? Then more relevant to us is, how can other companies develop similar routines and thinking in their organizations? The word kata actually means practice routine in Japanese. The book is a breakthrough because it does not focus anymore on the tools, methods or systems for improvement, but on the relationship between a leader and subordinate, the behaviors of the coach and the coachee. The book starts a movement in the US and to a lesser extent in Europe. In 2015, Prof. Norman Fall founder of the Lean Institute Africa and my prof of production management has been trained by Mike Rother. He organizes 
workshops in Africa and trains me. Then in 2020, as I am coaching Charles, my mentor, yes, you heard well, have an aha moment when I realized that leadership coaching can be improved by using the coaching kata. It's COVID time, and we can also coach online effectively by using this systematic method. So I start using it with some of my clients, friends, and children. You see, developing leadership habits is not about how much time you spend practicing, but how often you deliberately practice. And I want to become excellent. What the two stories have in common is not just Toyota, but fundamentally it is about developing leaders by exercising respect in action and acquiring habits. And it can be effective and scalable. It really depends on the engagement of top leadership. This is what I do, my calling. Most top leaders suffer from chronic anxiety. They need clarity and control. I build deep relationships with them and support the development of good leadership habits throughout the organization. They gain empowered leaders, joy at work, and superior results. Prosperity.